Okay, so hello, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Uyuni Community Hours, October edition. Um, I'm glad to see you, every, everyone, even with the new timing, and I hope you got the, the announcements. So let's see the, the agenda for today. Uh, first, we will follow up with the uh, organization of the meeting, uh, with the topic that we started in the in the last meeting. Then uh, we'll be talking about uh, Uni 24.10 uh, release that happened last week about what's new. Uh, we'll revisit the containerized Uni release strategy that is actually uh, done, but uh, just as a recap. And then we have a few sessions from our developers. Uh, first one from Michele about developing a uni with the dev container. Then Jan will tell us about app streams with activation keys. And last but not least, Cedric will uh, uh, present about getting to know Sonar Cloud to create cleaner code. Uh, before wrapping up, I will tell you something um, about Hack Week 24 projects. But even before that, I, I will uh, ask you again if you have any uh, question for mainly for the developers or if I can answer to that myself about the migration to containers that uh, we are supposed to be doing uh, now uh, without any further excuse or delay. So without further ado, let's get started. So Uni Community Hours organizations, uh, just a summary, uh, there was a proposal that we sent in uni discussions to move the meeting from Fridays to Thursdays and the proposal passed. Uh, there were only a couple of votes against and, and the rest, like eight votes or so, were uh, in favor and a similar number uh, didn't mind one day or the other. So we have decided to move this. And, and yes, and you are getting the new announcements and everything, and it is updated in the calendar as well that we shared some weeks, months ago. And so that's all. If you have any question about that, just let me know uh, either now or at the end of the meeting, but there is not much more to say about this. So next topic is uh, Uyuni 24.10, what's new? Uh, well, uh, this uh, uh, the first part of this slide is uh, the very same than before. Uh, it's a reminder that it is only supported in containers. Please plan the migration accordingly. Well, uh, now the supported version is this one, and it means uh, that uh, it is really needed to, to migrate now. And uh, there is a link here for the uh, migration documentation, how to migrate your uh, all Uyuni instance, uh, the all style RPM based to a container. And regarding what it is new in, in uh, last week's release, there is finally support for Ubuntu 24.04. Even months later, we finally managed to release that, but also for SUSE Linux Micro 6. Apart from that, uh, there are compressed POS image templates, and uh, there is a new ISO 8601 date format for API endpoints. And that were those were the most important points of the release. Regarding the container ISO uni release strategy, so everything is done. Uh, it wasn't in 2409 release as we were thinking because the release got postponed and it was finally in October and it got called 2024.10. Uh, but uh, you, as I have said uh, many times already, this is not released as RPM, it's released as containers only. And those containers are now based on uh, OpenSUSE Lib 15.6, so not anymore 15.5. Um, well, the the host in which uh, uh, Uyuni is su uh, supported is in uh, OpenSUSE Lib Micro uh, 5.5, but uh, these are containers, so this could be working on other uh, uh, container hosts. So if you are testing it or, or trying it in, in something different, let us know and uh, uh, maybe 
something is not working that we can fix or maybe you can tell us that everything is working and and we can consider expanding the the supportability of uh, of the tool so any question about the container containerization we right, will release it this way by supported yes, here you mean that we're testing it uh internally on 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 leap micro 6 on leap yeah. micro but <laughs> that's it yeah yeah it's it's a community product anyway so the supported part is uh, it means what it means <laughs> so th thanks cedric for the um remark um okay so now we can go with the developer sessions and the first one is about developing a unit with the dev container and it will be uh, michele presenting okay yeah hi so let me share the screen now okay you should see the slides right i can see it okay great so uh, yeah uh, hi everyone uh, so this is the, yeah, regarding uh, an idea that i had in the in, in the last time um, about developing using the container. So I had some tests, uh, I had some results. So I'd like to have a feedback uh, if it's uh, also good for the rest of the community, if it's a good idea, if I need, if we want to spend time on it or it's it's not. So right now, uh, it's, it's, it's almost more than three years right now that I'm developing with uh, Uni. And uh, yeah, there are some, some things that uh, uh, for sure can be improved uh, on the uh, development process that uh, that we have so for example uh, when you when we start uh, when uh, you start to, to to develop on uni there is this wiki page uh, uh, but it contains uh, lots of information uh, somehow it's also different to search what you're really looking for there are also some some information regarding the uh, development environment, uh, but some of them are obsolete. So yeah, there are some problem in uh, in this wiki that we might improve. And uh, also uh, developing the first time uh, required uh, quite quite time. So because you need to uh, to configure all the all the repository, download the dependencies. So yeah, it's not the the ideal case for uh, people who would like just to to do something really, really quick, uh, or so would like to to, to contribute uh, without spending uh, time. So um, yeah, the the idea that uh, I, I had that I had some tests that I'm going to present is using the dev container uh, for whoever they ever known um, ever heard about the uh, dev container. So basically, it's just uh, uh, set, setting up uh, a container for doing all the stuff regarding the, the development. Uh, so in your base code, you would have uh, a setting uh, a JSON uh, that would, would be used by your uh, IDE for uh, for setting all the all the extension uh, or the linting, the format, uh, whatever. You would have uh, a dev container JSON that define uh, uh, with the decor file, for example, that define the the, the image that uh, you would use uh, uh, as uh, as uh, for for the container, and then uh, the code that you have in your local machine would be mounted uh, in this container, and uh, you would have everything already already set up. Uh, okay, this that shows VS Code, but something that uh, it's quite interesting that I discovered um, in the in the last day that uh, right now it seems that uh, I, 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 I just checked the the Java uh, development environment, but yeah, for example, now that container can be used also in Eclipse and IntelliJ. In this case, of course, the dev container can be the same because it's the, it's the it's the container that we're going to use. But the setting JSON should have uh, should be customized for each one of the of the. the. So, uh, and okay, another things that uh, okay, and the, um, beside the, the dev container, uh, there is also this tool provided by GitHub that is GitHub Space. They they have this this find this uh, funny presentation in the, in the in the website but yeah you can consider it uh, as a, a dev container on cloud uh, hosted by by github so uh, i started to have some tests for that it seems that is working pretty well so for example what i'm going to show you is okay i, I started with the unit tools uh, for whoever 
for who of you doesn't know, okay, it's the is the repository that contains uh, a manager DI, manager CTLO, the tools that we created uh, for the for the container. Uh, I started with this one because uh, yeah, there are something that uh, should be it should be configured uh, because it is Golang. Uh, he has patch file, he has unit test, uh, but yeah, it's not complex as uh, as the uni. So uh, okay. So the idea that I had, uh, okay, um, and okay, the, the configuration, as you can see, is pretty easy. So for example, here in unit tools, uh, I configured two container. One is fresh because it allows uh, every time the, um, the dependencies, another is uh, use a pre-built image. And yeah, just with the two files, a Docker file, a dev container JSON, everything can be, can be set. Um, another, okay, this is, and, uh, in this way, when you download your code, the code in your local machine, and you open your reader, a pop-up appears that just just say, okay, you have that container, do you want to use it? And it seems to work pretty well. And um, regarding the, 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 the interaction with the GitHub code space, what I try to do is improving here the, the template that we have for the um, for the pull request, uh, okay, this is a pull request against my my local repo. But yeah, as you can see here, there is this button that describes the, the code space, uh, uh, how it's running. Okay, code space have some cost, uh, but uh, if you're massively use it, uh, but uh, yeah, if uh, if you're use it occasionally, it doesn't cost. But yeah, here I, can, I try to provide all the information, and when you click on create. You had you would have the, some some settings. Uh, you can set up, for example. Let me show you quickly. Okay, here you can configure which one of the dev container you would like to use. Uh, I'm going directly to the code to show you how it operates. So I, I, every, when everything is, is done, uh, a page will will be loaded uh, and you would see yeah, a VS code uh, in the browser with everything, uh, um, with everything set up. Uh, dependencies are already there. You can already build uh, and uh, yeah, everything is is there with also some uh, good extension? Uh, may not 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 every really is configured correctly, but this is just an example. So, for example, here uh, you can directly have uh, everything uh, the extension set for running the, the unit test. And um, yeah, uh, I try to add the, the same also for for uni. It is more complex, uh, as you can imagine. The uh, the the, the um, the, the Docker file is more complex because it, it requires to download dependencies, uh, also it requires to uh, run uh, the EV task. Uh, but yeah, at the end, what I had, uh, I, I can show you right here, what I had at the end that uh, yeah, after you wait some time, okay, now it's restarted, of course. But yeah, after you wait some time, uh, you have uh, everything uh, configured correctly. So uh, after you, uh, every, everything is set up, uh, you can just run and compile and uh, everything is uh, it's in there. And uh, yeah, this is regarding the code space. And of course, yeah, as I can show you here, yeah, everything can, can also, uh, when you download the code, you can use directly the, the dev container in your system. So yeah, basically, this is uh, it. I'm happy to understand if it's something that you can, everything is still my in my private fork. So I'd like to understand if it's something that it's valuable for you or it's, uh, if you have any suggestion about why we can prove the. And uh, yeah, I would like also to highlight that, uh, yeah, for the next uh, hack week that we are going to have in the next month, I created this this project uh, for try to improve it, 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 it uh, if uh, it's something that uh, it's it's uh, you think it might be useful. So yeah, identify something that uh, we need to verify better. For example, how to run the um, the, the the unit test, uh, how to uh, you can connect also to uh, with the remotely. There's something that we can test for sure, and also uh, we need to uh, customize everything for all the uh, development environment. So the idea at the end would be that uh, it might be the uh, we can consider to. Uh, redesign the the wiki development. Uh, try to get rid of the void information and just suggesting to to use the dev container. So mm, yeah, this is this is everything about. I don't know what you think about that. Okay, thank you, Michele. Uh, any question from the audience uh, about 
developing new unit with the dev container? Not a question, but, but very nice idea. Maybe you saw several persons clapping. Sorry, I was not aware that the reactions caused <laughs> sound. But yeah, very nice idea. Idea, and looking forward to get it merch and available and easy to use for for everyone. Okay, and Oscar also shared some information about another attempt made in in Uni project uh, GitHub. Uh, page. Oh yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I, I saw that uh, it was the starting point, to be honest, for, for the dev container. But uh, yeah, there was some. Uh, I, I need to do some adjustment. But yeah, the base, the base code that I that I used that I just showed you was based on the, not that part. So yeah, something was missing. For example, the 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 task for creating uh, for setup everything. But yeah, most of the of the code was was used. So thanks for that. Okay, thank you to Oscar as well, and thank you, Michele. So. Is there any other question, comment about this? Or if you think about that uh, later on, there will be time for questions at the end as well. So far it doesn't look like, so let's go on. And the next presentation is about app strings with activation keys that is going to be presented by Jan. Hi, hi everyone. Um, let me quickly share my screen as well. Okay, still blank, I guess, loading. Yeah, still not showing, not showing up for me either. Sorry, just got dropped. I will try again. Okay, there is something your uh, virtual manager. We see, it. yeah, virtual yes, manager. perfect, perfect. Okay, let's start. So, um, yeah, today I'm going to talk to you about um, using app streams with activation keys. So, as as you might know, um, we um, developed uh, the native support for app streams for a while now. So you, um, some of you are probably already familiar with it. And yeah, after that, we uh, came up with some additional convenience features. And yeah, this is one of them. So the the um, the need it was um, actually so whenever you are working with app streams on also in with Uyuni, um, when you register systems to Uyuni, you all. all almost always needs um, some activation keys, uh, sorry, uh, some, some app streams enabled in a system from, from the get-go, right? So whenever you register a system, you, you wouldn't want to manually add, uh, set the app streams and, and prepare do this, repeat, repeat this for all clients. So we came up with a way to add um, activation um, app streams to activation keys. So with that, you um, can have a ready to go system in terms of act uh, app streams um, whenever you um, register those systems. So um, I didn't prepare any slides, so I think it's best if I if I just, just show you how it works right away. So for that, I have a, a Uni installation here um, and yeah, no systems registered yet. And if you look at the channels, I have synced um, Rocky Linux 9 channels, uh, the base channel and AppStream channel and CRB channels. So in the AppStream channels, you can see there's a bunch of AppStream modules available. And also the other um, CRB channel, I don't know if, uh, how, how often you use this channel, but this is also a modular channel. It has its own um, AppStream modules. Um, just for um, variety, I added that as well. So um, on the client side, um, I have a, a Rocky Linux 9.4 uh, client. Um, with, it, it, this is a fresh installation. It hasn't been um, registered or I didn't do anything with the app streams in the client. So let's, uh, let me show you. 
you can see so there's no no module enabled as of yet so what i'm going to do is i'm going to prepare an activation key and um add uh, the add some app stream modules that i want enabled on the client and then i will um, register this this client with this activation key and we will see how it works so um, let's start with activation keys um, and create a new one okay so the first thing base channel is going to be rocky linux 9 and of course i want my child channels to be included as well and let's create this so um, as soon as you add some modular channel in the in the ch ch uh, channel list here um, you will notice this extra tab here uh, called app streams and this is only visible for like i said uh, the activation keys that has ha that has modular channels in it i go ahead and click in, on this so this ui is the is basically the same as uh, you would use when you're enabling um, modules for for any client any registered client so if you if you look at this page i can see all the modules listed for the app stream channel and in addition also the, all the modules and CRB channels. So um, for now, I'm just going to enable, um, let's do PostgreSQL and let's do Node.js 18. So I want these two modules to be to be enabled um, on my client when I register the client. So yeah, apply the changes. So one thing to uh, mention here is that this uh, function only enables the modules in the client. It does, it doesn't necessarily install its packages so if i want that in addition so i want uh, node.js Node for example ready to go in my system right so in addition to to this i should go to the packages tab and add the all the packages that i need installed so i'm just going to keep it simple and add node.js in it and now my activation key is ready to be used um next up let's go to bootstrapping um here's my fresh client here and the critical part is the activation key key here i'm gonna add this and i'll just go on with the bootstrapping so while waiting for it oh okay okay so this has been the same name has been used before so it complains about the you need to remove it from the known host from okay, the server. just need a second can you make the a font for the uh, i will but this is not that important just yet yeah mm -hmm. okay the no, huge, the huge pay no attention to the man behind the curtain <laughs> <laughs> exactly so yeah um while waiting for it um i want to also mention the api support for this of course with, John, with this every... one? can you can you make it a bit bigger for the console this one sure yeah okay Thanks. should be easy enough now otherwise i won't have any space to work anyway so um i want to mention that the of course with with as with every feature that we introduce this also comes with the api support um so maybe i will um just touch that a little bit while waiting or it's actually ready um so uh, let me show you just one call um this api um, is just a variable for my url um activation key key or keys we'll see um, get details so this is an existing endpoint that we are already using with the activation keys but now this has some some additional information in it okay not not keys but activation key probably yes um sorry Yes. Okay. As you can see in the output, the new section is here, the app streams part. This will um, show you all the in it, all the added um, app stream modules in this activation key. So apart from that, we also have um, a bunch of other methods. Um, 
endpoints to be used um, regarding um, app streams. So I don't have the API installed. Anyway, so you can find it in the API docs. There's nothing um, out of the ordinary there. So uh, what, what I what I do in the UI right now, you can you can do all of these um, with your scripts um, using the API. So um, let's see. My minion is here now. Um, I want to wait until every event is finished, and they are. So the first thing you can see it already here um, is that uh, the, the channels I selected in the activation key are subscribed. This is nothing new, nothing surprising. And when I go to software and app streams, I can see that my two um, modules are here enabled. In addition to that, if I go to list packages, I can see the cor correct version of of Node.js is installed, Node.js 18. So this is, um, ex like I said, this is a convenience feature that you, um, otherwise you would have to do the, all this, these steps in addition yourself. But right now, as soon as I register a system with this activation key, I have all my um, modules and configured and my packages installed. Um, to maybe check this out, um, let's try to, SSH into Minion. Now, if I check the um, enabled module list, I can see Node.js 18 here. And also, I can see that my package is installed. So this is all I wanted to share with you today um, to show the feature. And I'm happy to answer questions if you have any. Okay, so far I only see positive reactions, no comments, and I can I can say that this is something uh, uh, coming from a request from uh, users, community, even customers of the enterprise product as well, and and this will be very much welcome. So thanks, Jan, for this. Thank you very much. One thing, uh, just as a caution, this does not obviously because it's included in the activation key it doesn't necessarily know about what is or is not already enabled in terms of modules on that client so if the client comes on board and it already has a dnf module enabled that may conflict with this um what happens with the when the activation key takes place so yeah, that's a good point. I haven't tested it explicitly, but I would expect it to fail, um, some states to fail during registration. And I, I need to see if that cancels the whole process or just um, finishes it with, with some, some errors um, that we need to see. But yes, you're right. Um, but in a, in, a, in a correct environment, I, you would expect to know your clients, uh, what, what, what are enabled there before you're registering them and, and take care that you don't enable anything in the activation key that would conflict with them. Okay, any other comment, question about this? Okay, for the ones using uh, Rocky or any other uh, Red Hat derivative, uh, I hope you can give it a try and, and let us know. So thanks, Jan. Uh, if you thanks for your think time. Of, yeah, if you think of any question about this, the same, uh, shoot it at the end of the presentation. There will be more time for questions. So back to my slides. So next is going to be get to know Sonar Cloud to create cleaner code, and it will be Cedric presenting. OK, let me share and find a proper screen. OK. With such a color, it's easy to find out in the previews of the browser. So welcome, everyone. So I want to present something, a tool that we have um, already set up for a, long, for a while here. And it's very useful when developing on code. Um, so it's Sona Cloud. And now it seems that they renamed it to Sona Cube Cloud. 
So uh, Asona Cloud is free free to use for open source projects. Um, it's not a, an open source project itself. So this is the uh, Sona Cloud page, and I can just log in here. Log in. Uh, um, you just need to use the uh, GitHub credentials to link your accounts with Sona Cloud, and then Sona Cloud will automatically associate um, the uh, the issues to your user in in the projects that are analyzed. So. We have the unique project here, organization here, where we have two um, two projects, Tetra, um, which we use for packaging Java dependencies, and Uyuni. So this is the interesting one. Um, so you see the global status here. Um, so it globally has fa failed its analysis for the main branch uh, you can check out the full analysis here to see what's happening and you see like we have 756 new issues the new code is uh, is a bit dated is two years ago so it means that in two years we added 756 issues um and we have security hotspots to review here so these are the interesting points. Coverage um, is hard to, um, I, I'd say it's not a very important metric here because we have lots of code that cannot be covered here by unit tests. So it's very hard. Um, you also see Sonar Cloud notifications um, in pull requests. So I picked up here a pull request where you have Sona Cloud um, test of failing. So if you see that one thing in one of your pull requests, you need to go to the details. And in details, it will show you what fails here and you can see the analysis on Sona Cloud. So Sona Cloud analyzes main and each of the pull requests. So here the condition is that we are duplicating a lot of lines, it seems. If you have new issues, you would see them here. Um, I'd like to also show you a bit what are, what kind of issues we can see. So we can check that oh, wow. here in the main branch issues. So you have all the, the, the issues that Sonar Cloud has reported. Uh, you can filter by a lot of things. You can filter by language, by date, by status, um, by file, by author, whatever. And also by, by type of um, issue. So what is a, here in the security? So we have things to, to try to disable to disable external entities in XML change um, need to stronger protocols things like that and you also have uh, other ones that are pretty useful um, or is it you, we can check in the Java rule uh, rules for instance. It removes here, it notifies about empty classes, uh, an empty class. There are some potential null pointer exceptions sometimes. Um, some member that could be protected and so on and so on. And here, if you signed in with your uh, GitHub user, and you are the code, the author of the code. It will automatically assign the issue to to you. And um, you can flag the issues uh, as valid or even false positive, or even fixed. So it's not because there is an issue reported here that there needs to be a fix. It needs to at least be investigated to see if it's a valid one or not. 
And if there are some uh, false positives that are coming too frequently, or some rules that we don't that are not fit for our um, our code, feel free to tell me, and I can adjust the configuration. Uh, you also have the security hotspots here, so these are potential security problems that we could have. Uh, for instance, here you have some some issues related to regular expressions uh to avoid to to, to uh, that could be causing denial of service um what is interesting is that it shows you the code that it has a problem it exp you have some blob about the risk and also how to fix it so there is quite extensive documentation examples on what you can do, what you can uh, to to fix it, and what is the problem? You also have sometimes have links to other articles explaining the problem. Um, you can also measure, uh, have some some statistics on the code and uh, code quality, and you can dig in uh, on a, a file per file basis. So this is basically the kind of data that you have using Sonar Cloud. And they are pro providing a, a nice tool. It used to be uh, called Sonar Lint, and now it's called Sonar Cube IDE. So it's basically um, a plugin for IDEs that you can use to show the Sonar Cloud errors inside your IDE. Um, so you can see that they have, they're providing super, uh, plugins for various IDEs, VS Code, um, the JetBrains family, Eclipse. Um, and I, I think I've seen some, even some people who did something for Vim, which I need to try it uh, at some point. Um, These reactions things are sound is pretty strange. <laughs> um, you also need to bind your Sonar Sonar Lint to Sonar Cloud. Uh, so this is a, a um, wiki page I, I found out by from the website, but it seems it's outdated. But at least it has some nice screenshots on how to do it on on IntelliJ. You will need to generate a token uh, on your profile uh like uh, where uh, where is it again uh, i'll need to figure out exactly where this is in your pro in your account you, you can create tokens security da, 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 da. existing tokens there yeah, yeah here tokens and in my ide here in sonar lint i have opened one of the biggest files we have here and it still have quite a few, a few errors here. So it will show you, for instance, um, cognitive complexity here. You can have to do's. Uh, and here you have the, um, so here we have a wildcard that's not super good. And you have some description of the issue, how you can fix it and so on. And that's it. Uh, the goal is to um, introduce as um, as few as possible errors, uh, Sonar Cloud errors there. Fixing all of the existing ones is um, a huge task. Uh, if someone wants to do it, why not? Um, but um, at least we'll need to try to avoid in adding any more uh, errors. I know that for now we are manually setting the um, the new the, uh, the the reference for the new code, which was not done for two years, and we could have a, a rolling th uh, 30, 30 days comparison for the new code, for instance. I'm not sure if this is something we want to uh, set up or not um okay that's all for me maybe you have questions or remarks 
Okay, nothing really in the chat. Uh, at least not too important. Just some comments about BIM. Uh, any question about Sonar Cloud for Cedric? Is there is is there something from the report, Cedric, that you think we could create? <coughs> sorry, as good first issues for Uni. I mean, there is probably nothing that is super super easy to fix, but maybe something that is in an in an acceptable level of complexity. Uh, I think we have the uh, null pointer potential null, null pointer exceptions. I think there is a rule that uh, um, shows them. Uh, these could be easy easy fixes. In most of the cases, uh, we also have the Java generics, um, but sometimes they're harder to, uh, to fix. Some of are easy, some are not. But yes, for sure, there are some rules that we we could use to generate easy, easy fix uh, first good first issues. That could be good thinking, especially about maybe the hack week. Raul is going to comment something on that later, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any other question for Cedric about Sonar Cloud? OK, it doesn't look like. So let's go on. And this is uh, yet another revisit, uh, revisited slide from last uh, presentation. Is the about the uni migration to containers. I really wanted to insist on that because this is this is now more or less compulsory, and um, maybe some people were postponing it to the last minute. So here I share the the URL of the documentation. I share it here again and a screenshot of it. Uh, even with the 24.10 uh, updated documentation. So you have all the information there. And uh, just in case you have uh, any question or you are finding some issue and you want to ask, or uh, maybe if it is too complicated, uh, uh, you can open a, a GitHub issue about that. But uh, let's see. Okay, no, nothing relevant apparently. But well, anyway, if you do the migration later on and you find problems, uh, please uh, open an issue. Uh, try to reach us in Gitter or or let us know. Okay, so. Next and last point of uh, today's session is about Hack Week 24 projects. So there is um, our Hack Week 24 is happening on November 18th to 22nd. That is in more or less two weeks and a half uh, from Monday to Friday. And uh, if you go to hackweek.opensuse.org or, or uh, you can find uh, some topics. Uh, sometimes in the main screen you can even see Uni as one of the topics, but those are uh, changing. So if you go to uh, slash 24 slash topics slash Uni, you will see those four uh, possible projects uh, regarding Uni. And yeah, the, the Hack Week is open to everyone. So if you want to uh, contribute and, and hack with us, uh, just sign up and register to the project you are interested in or maybe you want to uh, propose uh, another project different one so ideas are welcome and that's mostly about that uh, is there anything i might be missing about the uh, hack week anyone wants to add something uh yes i something i would like to say as well that uh, maybe uh, you are just a user of uh, Uyuni and you are seeing complicated or more or less that things that seem to be complicated by developers in the session. You don't really have to be a developer. And for example, for the testing uh, new Linux distributions on Uyuni, how to add a new distributions into Uyuni, you don't really need to be a developer if you know how to use Git a little bit and read code and it is just adding some uh, bits that are very similar to what is already in the code. 
So this is for everyone and sometimes uh, fixing documentation on th things like those and those don't really require big developer uh, skills. And of course, those are the proposals proposals we have for now. There could be more proposals. Cedric just mentioned on the chat that there is a new one, apparently. So if there is something else you want to do and it's not uh, related to development, there is work to do. Could be that maybe you are a web designer and you want to improve something on the website, just as an example, or you want to improve the documentation, the official one or the wiki or something else, then there's plenty to do, even if you don't really want to read code. Okay, yeah, actually, Ornella just said that there will be a, a new uh, project. So I, I wrote four of them here. Cedric said that there is now another one. And uh, Ornella said that uh, she will be adding one about documentation. So if you don't, you don't have any idea or don't want to think about anything and just contribute to something that is going to happen, you will have plenty of opt opt options. So... Anything, any general question, anything else that uh, you would like to ask or comment? Okay, it doesn't look like, so I think we can wrap up some minutes early. Thanks a lot for attending. Uh, glad to see you here and uh, hopefully I will see you in the next edition in the last Thursday of November. I am going to stop the recording. Happy hacking everyone and enjoy your afternoon or rest of the day. Thanks,